Welcome back to Reimagine 2020. I'm Yona Hockhauser, and today I'm glad to be joined by Monty Metzger, founder and CEO at LCX. Monty, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Welcome. Well, first off, for, for those in the audience who might not know who you are, do you want to give a little background, kind of who you are and how you got into blockchain? So I got into blockchain around 2013, and this was a, a milestone for us because I had been an investor for a couple of years and then turned into um, an entrepreneur in the blockchain space again. So my journey started out in the 90s as being an entrepreneur. Then I sold the company, become business angel investor, and used a lot of my knowledge as a futurist and well-known like researcher to invest into tech companies. And then as a regulated venture capital fund, we wanted to invest in that space as well, like in tokens and Bitcoin, BTC and everything, but there was no infrastructure there. And when I realized how big the opportunity is, I switched sides again. So being from the entrepreneur side to investor and now back in the entrepreneur seat, which is super exciting. Mm -hmm. And I see you're wearing an LCX shirt. What, what does LCX stand for and, and what do you guys do? So LCX stands for Liechtenstein Crypto Assets Exchange. And we are a FinTech company that focuses on tokenization of assets security token offerings and advanced trading pools. So um, we are based in Liechtenstein and we operate in accordance to the new blockchain laws. And we have introduced a comprehensive co crypto compliance suite to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what is some of that suite? I mean, I know you, you mentioned tokenization. On your company's website homepage, I checked it out. The first thing it says in big letters is tokenize everything. What's so good about tokenization? Well, the, if you look at the current financial markets, it's like these trillion dollars of markets um, which are currently traded. And then there's another like asset class which is non-liquid yet, like real estate, for example, but also like a lot of other company shares which are not tradable and which are locked. So with tokenize everything, it really comes to the core of our vision where we want to unlock these assets, make them available as an asset class, for retail investors as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you can invest in real estate, you can invest in, in a movie production, for example, as well, but that's typically to um, only limited to accredited investors or like high net worth individuals and not for mass markets. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something where the tokenization opportunity really comes in to take these assets, which had been non not liquid and make them liquid. Um, on it, like on top of that, I would say the big opportunity is we have the introduction of a new technology, blockchain technology, and it feels like the introduction of email to letter. So of course, it works by sending a formal post um, physical letter, but everybody knows it's much more efficient with email and now chat and everything like that. And it's similar to blockchain to the financial world. So blockchain is to the money what email was to the letter. It, it seems like, you know, in the crypto space, there, there's, there's two sides. There are the people who are fighting for tooth and nail that crypto is not a security. They're, they're, they, 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 they want to burn the word security. They're running away from the word security because they're scared of that regulation. Uh, then there's the other side, like you guys that are, that are saying, no, let's lean into securities. Let's put securities on the blockchain because th there's so much to offer. Um, you mentioned liquidity. Uh, that being one of the big advantages of tokenizing um, uh, uh, securities like real estate. You mentioned movies. What do you think is the biggest opportunity uh, for tokenization? Um, is it real estate? Is, is, it, is it traditionally just totally illiquid assets? Or are we going to see the formation of, of totally new securities that we couldn't even imagine at this point? So we see the big opportunity in securities and we are not afraid of taking the extra step and the regulatory side, but actually for us, it's not important that much if it's seen as a security or utility, we first have to look at where do we bring in value for the, for the users. So when we talk about tokenization, we also think about all different kinds of assets which are um, kind of unlocked but could be represented in another way. So for example, a big case is red Bitcoin where you have kind of overcoming the different chains and you've seen the, the growth of it in demand. 
So tokenization could go beyond what is the security, but it's just like a cryptocurrency or crypto assets differently. But um, like as we invested a lot into crypto compliance and, and the whole crypto compliance suite which we launched, we are also able to do um, to be ready for the next growth wave of the industry, which is coming from these security tokens. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, uh, I heard a story, I'm not sure if it's true, but I heard a story about the, the, the founding of LCX. And I'm not sure if it's true. So let me, let me ask you, I heard that, that the original idea was just come up on, on a napkin. Is that true? That's right, yeah. And I was um, here in Zouk in Crypto Valley, in the heart of Crypto Valley. So this was 2017 when the whole hype was, when we realized that Bitcoin is here really to stay. And we said, okay, what is actually missing? And in like to enable a next growth wave. And it will be very interesting to see comparing 2017 and now as we see this big bull run on Bitcoin, but a big difference from there and, and now is really that this infrastructure had been built. And so on the napkin, we kind of uh, wrote down the key points on how do we build up the kind of a key infrastructure player for this next growth wave of the industry? How uh, can we bring it together? And so there are a the few things, basically Liechtenstein as a core, I think it's the, probably the best uh, jurisdiction for blockchain companies at the moment who want to go on the regulated side. So that's why the L in the name. And then obviously like crypto and assets and the exchange part, like what needs to be built to get started. And I can already tell you, we are close to the launch of our like exchange, our own exchange, LCX exchange. So where we really um, bringing all these elements together. Um, and as a, as a first phase, we launch with uh, crypto utilities, crypto utility tokens, and then next phase will be on security tokens then as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's quite the journey you guys had from just that napkin. Uh, Q3 has been your best uh, a quarter so far for you guys. Congratulations. Uh, what has caused uh, a, a, such a strong performance in a very economic uncertain time? I think in economic downturns, it's the best time to incorporate a company because you can leverage it and really build traction. So we always looked at our clients and customers first, wanted to deliver a demand and really build traction. So, and that's what you also see with our token, with, with all our assets, we don't do any like wash trading or manipulation on and things like that. It's very transparent and trusted. We do also publish numbers so the the like third quarter was really outstanding we have more than sixty thousand active traders on our platforms now and uh so it was a an opportunity for us while the markets has been going down that we built something and actually go counter productive counter way so uh, all the markets have been going down and our token developed rapidly so if you look at the ltx utility token for example from january till now it's really uh, a big, big increase in, in terms of value, what we deliver to our customers. Mm. And a, a key reason what we are building really is it, we are following a three wave approach. So the first wave is building up um, a tool set for traders. These are these advanced trading tools, which we have developed LCX terminal and now LCX DeFi terminal, where we deliver a, a, a software, which is, useful for any trader and we're building up a community and the second part is we are now rolling out different assets with our partners where we enable tokenization of assets and and just expose our community to new assets they can invest in and, and the last piece is the trading venue itself where we can then also enable a security token trading mm -hmm. Right. And so, I mean, when we're talking about crypto and compliance, and, and like you've mentioned, you guys are really going out of your way to make sure everything's by the book, uh, approval by the regulator is, and, and everything. And, um, it, and usually the, 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 um, the community or, or the group of investors that really appreciates these moves is, is institutions. Are, are you guys also uh, focused or do you guys also target uh, institutions which have made a big move recently into crypto? Absolutely. So the institutional market is very important for us. Um, and, and we see that there's some growth coming from 
But we also see a huge demand from any like retail investor and um, in the B2C market as well. So I would say the, the, the big amount of traders on our platform are the semi-professional markets. So mm -hmm. these are not institutional yet, but they probably will be there soon. Um, and so these are what we say pro traders. Mm -hmm. So uh, who are exposed to a variety of crypto assets who are deep into like markets and also trade across several exchanges. That's a kind of a core what we can deliver on our platform at the moment. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like you mentioned, I mean, right now, Bitcoin is, is, is on quite the run. I, I think it's at 18,500 as we speak right now. Um, now, what kind of effect does such a bull market, I mean, even altcoins are also uh, going up as well. What kind of effect does such a bull market have on a company like yours? Uh, is, is it bringing in all the FOMO traders? Is, is, this, is this the best type of market that, that you like to see? It's fascinating to see because it's really, when you look from the inception point of LCX from this napkin, which we drafted the, the idea and the vision to today, core infrastructure had been built and established. So I believe it is just the beginning from a shift from a more traditional market to a digitalized asset class. And um, so I, I eventually see that it's, it's just the starting of a big um, bull run into all different kinds of assets. And obviously Bitcoin is first, but you know, to make that happen, you need a, a couple of things which are more reliable. And if you look at the current exchanges in uh, who are like doing most of the um, trading volumes, you don't even know if they have an office or where they are registered or um, how they are regulated. So I would say there are the few who are really pushing hard, investing a lot into that um, similar area like we are, like Coinbase Pro, Kraken, who like, you know, Kraken got the, the banking license in Wyoming and do you think so? There are a few players who really push it, and we, we see ourselves really competing in that level to build something which is uh, compliant, trusted, and um, it, like a reliable partner uh, and, and platform. Mm -hmm. And um, so that that's a kind of a key part. But probably let, let me step back and, and explain to you the four core categories of what we're building as an LCX ecosystem. So some of us ex kind of compare us to INX, the Israel company who did this massive IPO uh, on, on like an STO IPO um, structure. But um, the big difference is that we're kind of bootstrapping the, the company. We're um, really building something from scratch step by step, not raising too much money. We have enough capital uh, uh, for the company, but we also want to show traction. And how do we do that? So LTX is this FinTech company uh, focusing on tokenization of assets, security token offering and advanced trading tools. Um, so one key part is the LCX STO Launchpad, which provides this one-stop tokenization platform to automate the whole fundraising and also the investment management. So uh, basically, it's, we see it as the most advanced and fully compliant platform for any token sale, regardless if it's a utility token or security token, we can handle both. And that's where also the whole underlying layer of crypto compliance suite comes in. So we do all the KYC, the onboarding, we are managing token holder registry, we're doing know your transaction um, analysis. So we're really taking out all the kind of stolen Bitcoins and everything will not be seen on our platform. And to enable this tokenization platform, you need a reliable and credible pricing system. That's what we call the LTX price oracles, where we're calculating our conversion rates for now two assets, Bitcoin, Ethereum, to US dollar and Euro. And um, we do this on a daily basis and publish these on the Oracle chain link network at the moment and also on our website. But it's, an, it's not so exciting uh, for retail user, but it's very exciting for any technical part because we, it's the underlaying part for any tokenization. And then the third or category is really this advanced trading pool, tools. 
So L6 Terminal is a one-stop platform where you can connect up to 16 exchanges. It has, uh, you see, over 5,000 trading markets, news, social analytics. You have the trading signals, and you have a very powerful analytics and smart order routing engine. So you always get the best price executed across these 16 exchanges, all on one platform. So you don't have to log in into different exchanges. You can all manage it from there. And that's um, a product which is there since early June uh, 2019 and had been growing tremendously. Then last month or like two months ago, we started LCX DeFi Terminal. I think September 30 was the, was the launch date. Uh, and that's a decentralized trading platform built on top of Uniswap. And what really makes it stand out is we built a DeFi protocol, like a second layer protocol to enable limit orders. Mm -hmm. Because on Uniswap, there is no limit order functionality. We can actually uh, enable this for you. So it's a, a smart contract, which runs on the back end with a price discovery engine. Um, and besides that, you have all the DeFi market data from Uniswap super fast and beautiful charting where we have lots of knowledge from L6 Terminal also. So there's trading view charting and these things. So that's already out there. So it's defi.lcx.com and terminal.lcx.com for the centralized exchanges. Uh, and that's where we kind of build up the community. And what I already mentioned, last but not least, the LCX exchange, you can already uh, feel a glimpse if uh, you're using L6 Terminal as a product, but um, the L6 Exchange is our own cryptocurrency exchange, which will be launched now before the end of the year. And um, it will be really something standing out uh, from all the other centralized uh, exchanges. And it will be really exciting for us to uh, yeah, tell the community more about this later on. Mm -hmm. Well, why, you know, uh, very exciting that you guys are launching the exchange. What, what separates your exchange from every other exchange out there? Um, you know, why should a user use uh, the LCS exchange? Yeah. So first of all, I think what's known to everybody. Um, so we are a regulated entity in Liechtenstein. And, you know, the regulation, it is marketed as a lightweight framework for blockchain companies but it's actually not that lightweight. So it's a quite a complex banking regulation which had been applied to blockchain industry. Meaning um, for the investors, for the traders, for all our users, it just gives legal clarity, security and trust for not only on the technical side, but really also on the regulatory side. They like investors have enforceable rights. They can go to Liechtenstein court to enforce their rights there. Uh, investor protection on the token level, but also on um, kind of the legal uh, aspects to it. So basically, that's a key differentiator for any product we, we launch, including the LCX exchange, that uh, we are really investing hard and um, a lot, investing a lot into that legal infrastructure to uh, build something which is in compliance with these new laws. Mm -hmm. um, and then besides that, there are a few other things which um, I can't mention right now, but we figured out um, some ways where we could um, merge the kind of the benefits of a DeFi world with the centralized exchange as well to really build something uh, which hopefully will create a lot of traction for L6 exchange as well. Mm -hmm. But for now, I think the, the key part is really uh, the trading terminals, which are already up there. Now the STO uh, launch pads and the technology which we built there. Um, so it's really kind of an outstanding uh, portfolio mix and ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Well, you, well, you mentioned- have you, uh, in, have, you, have you bought some movie tokens already? Have I bought some movie tokens? Not, not yet, but maybe after this interview, uh, I, I will. Um, uh, you, yeah, any any so good tips? Yeah, so we launched this project um, together with the with the partner. So they had been issuing a security token. That's the RBW security token, and it's a feature movie around this famous court case called Roe v. Wade in the U.S. Mm -hmm. about abortion. So it's a very controversial topic. 
but it has a high class set of um, actors, celebrities behind uh, uh, Nick Loeb and Casey Allen who have been producing it. And they have filmed the movie. They have, um, they're in last steps of co-production. And now it's basically the last money in, first money out. So it's a um, final raise they are doing and opening up to the future audience. And LCX has enabled that as um, a trusted technology service provider. So we basically put up all the technology behind. We did the smart contract and so far. And now at sale.rovivay.com, people are able to sell, buy the uh, RVW token and invest, become an investor or like a producer, co-producer of, of the movie. And for us, it's a first grade project to just explore uh, what we can do better, like how um, will that be um, put into the market and everything. But um, there will be more of these um, security token projects enabled by, by LCX will, will be more coming. And um, mm. it's the first kind of movie project you you can join in and, and, and support. Well, that sounds really cool. I mean, every, who doesn't want to you know, be part of, of a movie? Now there, if I were by that, that movie token, um, does that actually get me equity? Does that mean that I get a percentage of the earnings uh, in a smart contract, whatever, you know, whatever, however much money that, that movie makes, I am legally entitled to a percentage of that earning? So there will be concepts like that as well. And we're experimenting with different things. In this regard, it's actually much less risk because it's uh, similar to a loan. So um, it is technically, like legally, it's a bond instrument, which had been mm. issued by Roe Bate RVW Limited. Um, but with that bond, it is a 20% fixed interest rate annualized. Um, so you get the repayment of your investment plus the 20%. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very similar if you're giving a, a kind of a loan to, to a friend. Um, and he says, okay, he's giving you the thousand dollars back plus 20% over, over like the per year, every year. Yeah. So, and, um, so it's a very low risk investment, um, compared to, uh, like other opportunities, but it's also not, um, giving you the full upside, of mm -hmm. course. So that's something where we thought that's a good, like, uh, very interesting asset um, class to be to be tokenized. So it's a tokenized bond, mm -hmm. uh, which we've done. And we now have a pipeline of over $100 million of other tokenized assets, uh, uh, which are like ready to be started. And we're taking that one by one. And for example, there's another movie project where we do exactly what, what you said. So you get 40% of all profits, but you have also no, like, no guarantee. So it's not fixed 20% mm -hmm. like the other mm -hmm. one. It's like, can be nothing, it can be like 40% of like a lot, it can be 40% of, of a little bit revenues. Um, so you, you're you more on the entrepreneurial investment, high risk category. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's what's that's, so interesting. Yeah, that, that's that's what I like to see is, is, is you know, this, this wide range of options. I, I like that you guys are bringing to market and opening up a market for, hey, if I have a, a lower risk tolerance, I'll take that 20%. If I have a higher risk tolerance, I'll go, I'll go for, for, for the equity with the no guarantee. And uh, I think that's, that's the true sign of a mature market. Um, and, and, and an area I think that's, that's been a little lacking in the crypto sphere. And, and so I do, I am excited to see what LCX has to offer there. Now you, you did mention as well, you guys are really tying into to DeFi as well. You guys have your own DeFi exchange uh, and integration with Uniswap uh, as well as uh, you can't tell us yet, but uh, further integrations down the road with your own exchange. Uh, but what are your thoughts on DeFi? You know, as as an exchange, as a centralized exchange that prides itself on getting the on getting the banking regulation, on, on really going by the book and, and, and having accountability. You know, that's that's the whole point of the of the regulation is that people know uh, if there's an issue, they have a higher authority to go to that could fix the problem because you guys have regulation, you guys have a license. Um, when it comes to DeFi, it's the opposite side of that. It's the it's the free for all. It's it's what what you get is what you get. There's no one to complain to, um, but with it comes you know that the 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 lower fees and, and the higher risk, higher reward. Um, so how do you how do you as a, as as a originally a centralized exchange how do you come to terms with and, and deal with this kind of wild west of DeFi? 
That's right. So DeFi is really the, the Wild West, similar to probably the crypto exchanges um, five, six, seven years ago. Um, and we, we do see, of course, a lot of um, changes there. We want to get the balance right, you know, the balance mm -hmm. between innovation and, and regulation. And so with L6 DeFi Terminal, we created this um, decentralized trading platform, which is enabling you to trade on Uniswap. So it's not our own DAX in, in a way, but we are uh, facilitating or using our knowledge we've done with these like trading interfaces and building smart and super fast um, charting and, and uh, kind of uh, presenting the information in a different way, all the market data and so forth. So that's what you can expect on DeFi terminal as well. So we are visualizing all the data you get from Uniswap, but um, it's a much nicer view and you can enable, you can do um, the limit orders there as well. Mm. But you absolutely got it right in terms of the question, where are we heading? Because for us, it's an R&D field where we invest into building this DeFi terminal and exploring on how we could have a regulated instrument like a like a security token be traded on a DeFi exchange as well? Is that something we want to do as well? How would the regulator would see it? And um, my point or, or view in this is really that it, like similar to the cases from the SEC or other regulators on uh, crypto exchanges now, BitMEX, Binance being sued, um, problems with OKX in Asia and mm -hmm. so far. So, um, there, there will be also kind of a wave of where regulation will be enforced on DeFi platforms because sometimes mm -hmm. they claim to be super de decentralized and the smart contracts might be, but the infrastructure and the operations are not so much. So there's the question like who's responsible about that? And that's where we explore opportunities and say, you know, all this regulation is something which is, which is good. It's a positive element because it gives you as an investor more rights and investor protection, also clarity of information rights. You know, every, if you invest, the, you need to um, be aware of all these risks and that's the upside opportunity, but also the, the risk to you, there like disclosure information which needs to be published and then also ongoingly. So similar if you would invest into another asset class at, at, at NASDAQ, you have these rights as an investor. And I think that's where the clarity is needed. And this doesn't matter if it's on a centralized exchange or in, on a decentralized exchange. Uh, I mean, you, we wanna avoid any of these um, companies who, who are not delivering on what they promised. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, you, you, you guys are, are the regulated ones and you're, I'm sure you, you have dialogue with re regulators. What are the regulators' views on DeFi? Do you, do you have a feeling that they are going to come in soon and start trying to regulate it, start trying to give guidelines, but how it should work? And, and, and are they really going to be able to implement any of that? So in general, working with um, like regulators, governments, or even central banks or, or other bankers had been a fascinating journey. So we joined some working groups with the World Economic Forum on central bank digital currencies, for example. And my expectation was that we have to, like the workshops will start and we are then starting to explain what is Bitcoin and what is blockchain. But it was completely different. You, um, it's really, really impressive on how much knowledge they gained over the last couple mm -hmm. of years. So if you listen to like central bankers talking about it, the, you know, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, they have um, like deep expertise and lots of experts in their field. So they really understand what's going on. And we don't have to start with the basics, it's really going into details already. But they're of course very careful in doing something. So if a central bank would jump into the topic, um, I mean, that, that would be uh, like a big, big, very big thing. And um, they have also a lot of things to lose. So that's why they're like all the startups who come in and say like, we're doing this stable coin or whatever, there's only upside because if they make it, they, they win. But if not, like they, it's a failed startup. But as a, um, these big enti entities, like, a, like a, some banks or central banks, they have something to lose, which is the current business, of mm -hmm. course. And then on the regulatory side, it's the same. So lots of good knowledge, 
I think I can't talk for like how they see DeFi or not, but I, I see there's interest and there's competence also. So um, they, they know what's going on in the market. And now in particular with Liechtenstein is very interesting because there are lots and lots of new companies being set up now. Um, their company is doing equity tokens. There are additional security token projects. And they are coming with their concepts and also educating the regulators because they say, mm -hmm. this is what we want to do. And this is how it works. So they are constantly learning. And um, uh, yeah, and we hope that there are a lot of great, successful companies coming out of Liechtenstein as well, um, based on this new blockchain act. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it, it's good to hear that the people, that the regulators do have a good understanding because, you know, the, the worry as a crypto user is that, these people are afraid of something that they don't understand and then and they just put knock down hard harsh regulations and, and squash it. So it is good to know that they are understanding it and, and more knowledgeable than they once were. But a lot of this is such a new technology and there's such constant innovation that even us users, uh, you know, we still are figuring out, you know, every day there's a new a, a new product, a new tool, and especially in DeFi. So my question to you is how do you guys um, how do you guys label or view these new DeFi governance tokens? Uh, because right now, um, you know, a lot of a lot of these uh, DEXs and DeFi protocols are trying to track liquidity, and so they're 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 giving out, uh, you know, their their governance tokens, their utility tokens, whatever you want to call them. Um, and so essentially, uh, is it a utility token? Is it a security token? I mean, most of the people who are getting them are liquidity providers who are there for the profit but there are also people who are buying it because they actually want to use it to govern. Uh, so how do you guys view and how do you guys label uh, uh, DeFi governance tokens right now? Yeah, it's a good question. So in the, I'd say in the, in the, under the Liechtenstein perspective, so I'm not a lawyer or something, but I'm, you know, with a company building it, we have to make decisions on listing rules and everything. So it is, it's a major topic for us because we are not allowed to, to trade security tokens yet. Mm -hmm. So we need to, you look at like diff different tokens and governance token could be something interesting for us, but it, you have to see it case by case. And um, if you if you look at some of these tokens uh, who are who are issued and distributed and what they um, expect, uh, like there are just returns or profit sharing inside or like other um, besides the, the typical governance uh, rules, and they are obviously they could be easily seen as a as a security. And mm -hmm. then under the European aspect, there's also the defined e-money and the e-money regulations. So sometimes tokens could classify not as a security, but as a as money, as e-money. So if third party um, would accept it as a means of payment, you could eventually be seen as, as e-money already. And mm -hmm. so these conversations are happening on our end at the moment where we see how could this be classified and what is interesting under the, under the Liechtenstein regulation is they see the token as a container. So it could be filled up with anything. So you can tokenize a bottle and put it into the container. You could um, take a, a financial instrument like a fixed yield bond into the container, which we did for the, for the movie mm -hmm. project. You could also take equity, which would be security. But you could also say, this is a usage right, like a voucher to uh, exhibit this painting so or an entry fee, something. So these are typical uh, vouchers like your utilities um, where you, uh, which you can use later on. And then like government's token is mainly like voting rights um, and information rights. And you know, voting is also key part of, of an equity share. So if you own equity of a company, you have typically you have votes, you have information rights and so far. So splitting it down different categories it's highly fascinating, but at the end of the day, like how we have to see it is to take it case by case and evaluate it under this new uh, framework and, and see like what's in this token container. Really, are we able to list it? Is it something which is reliable? And at the end of the day, it's also something where we have to protect uh, our users, our investors. So if we would expose them to uh, one of these tokens, we are kind of partly responsible as well because we make it available for trading on our platform or for the exchange. And so I, I feel that that's something where 
Um, some other exchanges also need to um, uh, like step up and be, be more responsible in what they expose their, their traders with. Mm-hmm. You mentioned you, you mentioned in passing uh, at some point in this conversation about the OKX uh, exchange where, where there's been a freeze for, I think, at this point, two, almost two months. Uh, they can't do withdrawals because uh, one, of, one of the holders of the private keys uh, was dealing with an investigation with the government. Whatever. I, 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 don't, I don't really care thoughts either way on that. But the thing that really struck me was that such a big exchange, um, w- w- if you can't get in contact with one guy, that they have lose all access to their, to their wallets. That was what shocked me there. So when you're building an exchange, uh, an centralized exchange, um, how, how do you have to manage that? I mean, you obviously, you don't, you want as, you want to make sure that as little amount of people as possible have access to the funds because, you know, every other person is another, uh, you know, area of variable of attack. But on the other hand, you, you lose touch with one guy or he goes quadriga CX and, 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 and die somewhere. Uh, you lose funds. So how do you balance that? Uh, 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 you know, the, the management of those wallets. Yeah, exactly. So security is, is key, but obviously in this case it might be like two secure just to give it a <laughs> one person then which you fully trust. So it has to be different levels of um, protection. And I, I think it's similar to um, like different risk models. So there, there are different levels of uh, of security build within such an exchange like LCX. So basically, there are like like hot wallets, which has some um, like on uh, like custodian um, solutions where we are holding the, the keys in HSMs and in, in a secure manner with multi signature authorities and these things. But these need to be like quickly accessible. And then mm-hmm. also, uh, like every day, there's then um, some of these funds being transferred to a second level of um, a kind of a hybrid storage. And then we also have a cold storage solution, which is in a um, like level 10 high security vault, um, like deep cold storage, where we also then have funds. So, um, but obviously, like getting these out again, is, it takes 24 hours. Uh, and then like the different levels. And mm-hmm. that's what we've seen with other like reliable partners we have been working with. Um, so we know like what the Libra Foundation is building up currently uh, is, is interesting. And then also what um, Liquid uh, is doing in, in Japan and Singapore, they also have like different levels. And Liquid is a, the exchange, never got hacked, never had a security incidents on, on like the custodian part. So I think that's something like a, I would say uh, really stands out because you mentioned OKX, but there have been like lots of other security incidents, hacks, uh, other things where you see there's something wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it, it's not even like if they're regulated or not, it's just like, this should not happen. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's a responsibility from the founding team and the management team. And then by the way, it could never happen if they would be um, a compliant entity, because mm-hmm. they're the regulator forces you to do like the extra work, and that's mm-hmm. why it is complicated. And some companies also decided to like move out. So there had been news about companies moving from Liechtenstein because it's too complex. We also, are, on our own experience, we teamed up with a famous uh, exchange called Binance back in 2018 and we um, did announce a partnership with them and really tried to help them establish a regulated entity in Liechtenstein which completely failed and that's where we also got a lot of learning points from there because it it didn't work out and it's hard to have this uh, a company who had been operating in the wild west since a lot, very long time to just like turn them around and and my assumption is that with with OKX for example there's much, the story is much bigger than just like this one guy who has the keys. I think there's much more going on, which right. we just, just don't know. So, um, yeah, so that's why I believe it's a great opportunity now for LCX to come in because we don't have this history, trading history with a lot of things which have been uh, either shady businesses or money laundry or uh, things which we can't categorize because we didn't track the data yet. 
we've built it up from from scratch. So it's like two and a half years now in the, in the making. Um, we are like at the final stages to be put in in the, in the registry at the regulator at Liechtenstein with with these licenses, and um, then, and then we're ready to go. So it's a very interesting uh, moment in time, and we're trying to yeah enable the next trillion dollar wave for crypto. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, listen, I, I, I think it's really crucial for this ecosystem, not only, listen, there's a lot of people and there's a lot of times where you do want the unregulated, where you want the cheap, quick, fast, no one looking rules, but it's also really nice to have options like LCX that have, that are regulated to the, to the gills, that, that have to go through those, those strict and complex regulations, because then they're more trustworthy, you know there's no shady business going on between you and me and all our viewers, it's probably better that it didn't work out with Binance. As, as we all know, it, there's a lot of shadiness going on with them and, and with Binance US uh, with the leak papers. And so uh, I think better for everyone. Um, but uh, uh, I know you're very busy. So I'll give you one last question before, before I let you go. You did mention that you start off as an entrepreneur, then you actually became an investor. Uh, and then now you're back an entrepreneur. So what kind of unique lessons did you learn as an investor that you think are, give you a very unique perspective and a lot of help now that you are trying to go uh, and start your own business. Okay, so I think the key lesson I'm taking away from building up our own business, then like being on the investor side and analyzing a lot of businesses, and and now like being back in the entrepreneur seat, is really is really one thing. So and this is um, building traction with the users and building something users want. No, it's, it's something simple. Mark Zuckerberg also once said it, but that's core. Like we can um, spend millions and millions into building a platform and then there's nobody using it. So that's why we did not wait, like develop everything in the, in the back door in a room and then come up with the final solution. But we launched several products, the, the trading terminal, the like DeFi terminal. And every time we are learning and bringing that knowledge back to build something better and better. Mm-hmm. And we also back in, in, in my with my experience from from an investor side, we're not uh, raising too much money. So we are kind of competing. You know, Coinbase Pro there right before their IPO, they have hundreds of millions of raised. Uh, INX also is now raising uh, loads of money and trying to build the perfect system. And then we have uh, other competitors who are in the tokenization space, like. A regulated bank, Signum Bank or Zeba Bank, then does Kraken who have been in the, in the business doing now the banking regulation in Wyoming. So these are our, like our, our competitors in a way who have hundreds of millions of dollars on the bank, but we don't need so much money. We only need um, happy customers. Mm-hmm. And once we are at the point where we found something that really works, then we can scale it up really, and then bringing like more venture capital, but we don't need it at, at the moment. It's like building traction is, is the core and we are always have our customer first. And that's the, the my key takeaway from the, the investor side and, and building a, here now a new FinTech. Mm-hmm. Well, it seems like you have a, quite the game plan uh, going behind you. Monty, thank you so much for, for joining us and giving us a little bit of uh, you know, a little bit of, of explanation, a background about what's going on with LCX and the many offerings. Uh, it's very exciting times for you guys coming up. Uh, so I wish you luck with the regulators and with uh, the traction. I mean, I'm, I might go and invest in a movie right now. Hey, I could. Hey, mom, I'm, I'm a movie producer. This is great. I'm so excited. Monty, thank you so much for joining us. And for all of our viewers at Reimagine 2020, I'm Yona Hockhauser. Happy holidays. <laughs>